Hello and welcome back to my channel. So this is the retro view of the Nokia E7. Now, if you want to know how to install the Symbian Delight firmware, stay till the end. I'll be sharing some uh, good information how you could actually make the installation process brisk and smooth. Now, with that said, um, this device has inspired a lot of devices. Uh, there are certain companies, Android-based uh, devices these days that still uh, uses the design language of the Nokia E7 and the Nokia E7 certainly has inspired the Nokia N950 which is a developer only unique device which is hard to get by and uh, for those of you who are interested to experience how the form factor feels like then just get yourself the Nokia E7 which is more accessible this day now before I get into the details of the Nokia E7 uh, let's walk through to the evolution on how we got to this device so Nokia is no stranger when it comes to business oriented devices. They make popular devices, popular communicator series which host a foldable design with a unique hinge which gives you access to a secondary larger display which is ideal for watching your documents, editing your documents, browsing the net. So Nokia is no stranger to foldable devices back in the days and they uh, sort of um, did a lot of R&D on foldable displays, back in, uh, foldable devices back in the days and this has allowed them to come with a different solution especially when it comes to the hinge mechanism and you can see how the hinge mechanism is different on both these devices here. So the hinge mechanism becomes more complex, more sturdy and more reliable and you can see how after so many years the hinge device is still working perfectly well and all these devices are uh, still one of the best or the best business oriented device back in the days. Now my personal favorite has to be the Nokia E72 which has served me for at least a good two years. So the E72 is the best E-series device that I've ever used because you know, not only is compact, it has this full row of keyboard here, this has a powerful processor back in the days, 618 MHz of processing power which allows so many applications to be run uh, without any issues back in the days and this beautiful touch back here just complements everything that we do now coupled with this uh, beautiful compact design the processors and also the extra long battery life uh, this is certainly the best uh, e series device that I've ever used and it's still a reliable uh, secondary device if at all you're interested to use one over the weekends now uh, I've managed to get certain things running on the Nokia E72, especially the GPS, the offline GPS. So if you all are interested to know how to get the GPS running on your Nokia E72, do comment in the comment section below. I'll make a separate video for that. So with that said, let's go to the Nokia E7. So this is the Nokia E7. What's unique about the Nokia E7 is that it has a keyboard underneath which you can access by simply pressing down the display. So once you press down, then it will show you this beautiful keyboard underneath. So, a lot of people have complained that uh, it's quite hard to get access to the keyboard option. Now, the trick is not to push the display away, but to push them down. So, once you push them down, you can easily access the keyboard underneath. So, the Nokia E7 is the last uh, E-series made by Nokia. Now, the Nokia philosophy when it comes to a device is they not necessarily have to have the best hardware, especially when it comes to processing power. But it has to be something that gives you an overall balanced experience and this is true even till today. So a lot of Nokia devices back in the day does not have the most powerful processor, ETC, ETC, but they do have hardware that gives you smooth experience. Now, the ones on the E7 weren't that uh, powerful back in the day, had a 600 megahertz, 680 megahertz of processing power, 256 GB of RAM, but it was enough to be used comfortably good experience for the greater part of a day. Probably won't last the entire day, but it should last for your working hours. Now, with that said, the E7 hosts a lot of uh, beautiful hardware back in the days. It has an AMOLED display, uh, complemented with the Nokia Clear Black display technology, has an HDMI uh, output here, if at all you would, uh, you would want to connect it to the big TV. Uh, and definitely the key selling point would be the beautiful keyback underneath. Now, with that said, I won't be dwelling much on the hardware of the Nokia E7, but just to share with you how you can get a lot of things running on the Nokia E7. So one of the things that uh, a lot of people 
uh, would have uh, be interested to know is how you can get the delight uh, firmware installed on this uh, on any Symbian better device for that uh, matter. So one thing to understand is that the uh, servers hosting all these files they won't be around for that long. So if you want to install the Nokia, uh, if you want to install a Delight custom firmware, now is the chance. Uh, better to do it now before the firmware, uh, firmware server goes down. So the Delight custom firmware offers a lot of improvement under the hood. So one of the things is the app transition and launching time has been improved. So a lot of compatibility uh, to legacy apps has been pre-installed in this. So I'm not going to dwell about the light firmware offerings for now, you can read on that later, but I can show you a couple of things that still works on this. So let's say you want to use navigation, you still have the options to use the Nokia Maps. Uh, do note that this map is actually an older version of map, but as you can see, you can still use them as a basic GPS map. So let's say I would like to go to a certain uh, place. So all I need to do is just launch the app, make sure it is uh, in the online mode. Let's say I would like to go to Kuala Lumpur. So the options shown here are definitely uh, from an outdated map, but you can see uh, how you can actually launch the GPS. You can still use the GPS. It can still show you turn by turn navigation. So like I said, you can still use the GPS. As a just as a backup device in this case now what about apps option now previously in my uh, videos on how to repurpose the Nokia N8 I have shared about the Sistore app which is still working now do take note that Sistore app and the servers might go off and on from time to time so you, the server might not be working so the app store might not working but if it works then you get access to a lot of these uh, cool apps and games that is uh, available uh, these are basically just collection of apps and games around the net which has been curated and kept in a place to make your life easy. So uh, it still works well so I would advise you to definitely try this around. Now let's say what should we download something small and simple just for the demonstration sake. So let's go to Angular Seasons. Let's see if it works. Now do take note that although some apps might be shown will be available here it not necessarily means that you can download so at time some of the apps doesn't work that's basically because probably it's not available in the server anymore so in this case you can see that it is not downloading so most likely it is not available let's go for something else here plants vs zombie i don't know if this is okay so this is just a basic version of it so you can see if it's available it will be downloading without any issues So you can see how you can still use a lot of the functions on the Nokia E7. Now, another thing that I want to share with you is the JTube, whether or not you can watch YouTube. So JTube is one of the apps that allows you to do that. So all you need to do is just launch the app, go to the settings. Um, you have the option to play back the videos through the built-in media player or to the browser. I set it to browser because uh, I found out that uh, I find some difficulties of uh, launching it to play to the built-in player. So for example, this is one of the latest news so you know that uh, this is a recent video. Alright, let's play this. So, so it will go to the browser, uh, sort of uh, download a video of it. Okay, there we go. And there you go. Alright, so this is just to show you that you can actually use the GPS, you have an alternative store, you can still watch YouTube, and of course, uh, the beautiful Opera uh, mobile browser is still available. Alright, so browsing is also possible thanks to Opera mobile browser, and everything goes smoothly thanks to the beautiful keyboard underneath. Now, 
how to get the Delight firmware installation process to go smoothly. So the Delight firmware is actually available in a website. I'll share the link in the Nokia Power Visa article that I will be publishing in a while. So what it needs to do first is that it requires a Windows 7 PC. So you cannot be running the Delight firmware installation using compatibility setting. It has to be a Windows 7. In my case, my PC is Windows 11. When I use the compatibility setting, it goes into a crash. So the only way is to get Windows 7 installation. So it's hard to find a PC these days with Windows 7. So what we can do is install an app called VMware and run the Windows 7 in a virtual scenario. So you can install the Windows 7 virtually on your Windows 11 and then proceed with the Phoenix installation software and download the necessary files that is required to flash this uh, software. All you need to take note is that once you've installed Windows 7 virtually, you have to click on the option so that when the device is connected to the PC, it is recognized by the uh, Windows 7 which is in the virtual uh, compartment and not recognized by the default operating system. So it is easy, it will be a uh, message for that will pop up when you connect the device. Now, how easy is the installation software? Once you have the uh, necessary files stored in the necessary folder as given in the website instruction, it is a breeze. All right, it is an easy procedure. I've so far flashed my Nokia 808, my Nokia E7, and my Nokia N8. So it is easy. So all you need to do is just download the necessary firmware. Now, if you are going to install the Nokia Delight firmware for the first time, you have to install using a selected option called as Refurbish. So all this information is given in the website. I will share the link. Do take a couple of hours to read and understand before doing uh, the installation yourself so that it saves you a lot of time in case you come or experience any issues down the line. So once you install the um, Symbian Delight format, do note that uh, a lot of improvement under the hood will be there, uh, your files will be erased and whatnot. But um, as this is uh, using more hardware processing power to run things smoothly, do note that your battery life will be shortened. So I won't ex uh, advise you to be using this device as a primary device, mainly for a backup or a weekend device. So once you've got that running, you can install the apps from Sysform. Uh, the apps for the GPS can also be found in this uh, Tienda map store. All the links will be given. It's also the same as the one uh, I've done in my Nokia and 8 review previously. So, you have the options of uh, installing the Sysfor and the Maps without actually installing the Delight firmware. But uh, for those of you who still have this device and want to experience a more uh, fluid uh, interaction with this uh, Symbian device, I would suggest just to download and install the Symbian Delight firmware. Uh, do take note, like I said earlier, that these Delight firmware are hosted on a private server and this server will not be there for too long. So it might go off anytime and it might be difficult for us to do this on a later date. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if any of you are interested on how to get the GPS running on the E7, uh, then uh, do let me know in the comment section. I'll make a separate video if there's enough people interested with it. So with that said, I hope all of you take care. See you in my next video. Uh, have a safe weekend.